We don't have to tell you how a boss fight goes. You enter a large open space, meet the monster that's cruising for a heroic bruising, then proceed to kick butt as only a protagonist can. <laughs> But for a few games, that isn't enough. Some are determined to build up some boss fight anticipation much earlier in the game, going to extreme and theatrical lengths to sow the seeds of fear so that by the time you actually face that boss, you're nothing but a broken mess. <laughs> Here then are the boss fights that games made you dread the most, but we're spoilers for the following. him at all times. Do not let him out of your sight. There'll be time enough for you later, Kiki. Speaking of time, tick tock, tick tock. Is that a crocodile I hear? The rogues gallery of Batman's villains is more intimidating than a public speaking engagement for a crowd of hungry velociraptors. But in Batman Arkham Asylum, in which you're basically trapped on an island with what seems like every villain ever, there was one villain we dreaded facing more than any other, thanks to some shenanigans on the part of the game itself. Category 9 patient in transit. Pacification system active. Shoot to kill permissions granted. While transporting the Joker into the asylum, we got our first glimpse of a certain other inmate. That inmate being Killer Croc, aka Waylon Jones, the man with a thankfully rare genetic condition that turned him into a reptilian giant. Can you smell the excitement in the air? No? Hmm. Must have been one of the guards then. Croc, old boy! Is that you? Arkham's architects clearly didn't plan for having to accommodate a 10-foot iguana inside their facility, as Croc has to curl into a ball to fit inside their elevators, making the reveal of his full stature as he clambers out all the more menacing. Oh wow, he just keeps going, doesn't he? Blimey. But it's not just his size or his many, many, many teeth that make him intimidating. Before Croc even sees you, he knows you're there and he has his sights, or more accurately, his nostrils, set on you. I've got your scent, Batman. I will hunt oh, you down. Fortunately for you, Croc's shock collar keeps him from ending the hunt then and there, but his threat to, and I quote, eat your bones, sits with you for the rest of the game. So your first thoughts after all the inmates escape are, I wonder where Croc will eventually find me and swallow my skeleton. And if you manage to suppress those fears, the game is only too happy to unsuppress them again for you. I will find you. Rip your flesh like paper. Oh, that made us jump out of our skin which would definitely make our bones easier to eat. He even makes extremely short work of the Scarecrow. <laughs> by this point, you've had your nerves completely shredded by Croc's nonsense. So when you finally have to deal with Croc in his own lair, you're more tense than a festival camping ground. Not surprising then that Batman's strategy in this fight is avoiding Croc like an ex at a party, only interacting with Croc by throwing batarangs whenever he pops up out of his sewage filled waters. Ah! By the end of it, we were legging it the hell out of there as fast as Bruce's muscular legs could carry him, hoping to never see that horrible lizard face ever again. Yeah, suck it, Croc. How are you going to eat my bones now? I will find you! Oh no, my bones. You wouldn't think a game like Dark Souls would need to go out of its way to make you fear its boss encounters, not when each one is famously hard, and the intro cutscene at the start of the game is already the most dread-inducing 216 seconds in human history. Muto unleashed a miasma of death. Yeah, that should keep me on edge for the next, oh, uh, 11, 12 years or so. Cheers, Dark Souls. But there is one very special encounter that the game goes out of its way to hype up, and that's the battle against Seath the Scaleless, the butt-naked dragon. Which is not his official title, but frankly, we wouldn't put it past Dark Souls. Need we remind you that this is a game where you fight something called Ceaseless Discharge. 
you'll meet the fearsome Seath face to face deep within his archives, having walked through one of the game's fog doors that always signals an incoming bad time. And sure enough, there he is, with a health bar the size of Madagascar and no clear path forward, forcing you to hide and try to figure out what to do next. Fortunately, you don't have to think about it too long. Unfortunately, that's because what to do next is have your HP sliced up by Seath's unstoppable waves of ice spikes. If this is your first time playing Dark Souls, you'll quite rightly be freaking out right about now, little knowing that in fact there's literally no way out of this encounter, and Seath is going to kill you no matter what you do in the only mandatory player death in the game. Oh, damn, there goes my zero deaths run. Did that... did that sound believable? Why would the game force you into this no-win battle? Presumably to give you a taste of Seath's immense power, and boy does it work. Because having been on the business end of his HP wrecking ice magic, you're going to spend the considerable amount of time before your next meeting with Seath dreading every moment. As such, when you do eventually get within stabbing range of Seath, expect any and all bravado you once had to evaporate, especially once those ice spikes you've been thinking about non-stop come into play. On the upside, by now you've had an opportunity to study Seath's moves, so it should be child's play to anticipate his attacks, dodge at the right time, and master your fear to prove that you are the true hero- OH MY GOD! Ah ha! Spare me Lord Seath! I'll give you names! When it comes to Norse mythology, we here at Outside Extra are pretty much experts. You've got the Allfather Odin, God of Mischief Loki, and God of Thunder Thor, who is friends with Tony Stark, unlike the other two who are more like acquaintances. But Hellblade Senua's sacrifice represents a much darker chapter for the Avengers, as it's got fewer funny raccoons and many more terrifying deerhead monsters. <laughs> This is because protagonist Senua has gone to the underworld to try and rescue the soul of her dead lover Dylan from Hela, the goddess of death and, as we'll find out shortly, being f***ing terrifying. Upon trying to cross the bridge to reach the heart of the underworld, you're greeted by its ruler and, spoilers, Kate Blanchett doesn't look anything like she did in Ragnarok. Guess they couldn't afford the likeness rights. Instead, you're met with this… thing. Yes, Senua! Same! When Senua manages to collect herself and her sword, it turns out this isn't even the boss fight. Just the game's way of saying, watch your back, because there's hella to come. In fact, your reunion with Hela isn't until right at the end of the game, which means you've plenty of time to mull over quite how nude and terrifying that giant bald woman was. Only suffering brings salvation. Ah yes, there she is again. So begins the inevitable boss fight you've spent the bulk of this game dreading. You killed her! You are the devil! <laughs> Captain America's not coming, is he? I thought you would appreciate the sentry I chose. The great Argodon hunters from the Telos realm. No long thought to be extinct, created to hunt only the Slayer and his night sentinels during the Unholy Crusade. Some improvements on their design have been made. Enjoy what is undoubtedly my finest work. There's only one thing that the Doom Marine fears, and that's that people online will get bored of making memes where he's best friends with Isabel from Animal Crossing. Mm. But as far as the Legions of Hell are concerned, the silent hero of the Doom series is seemingly immune to getting scared, because we imagine you have to be pretty much fearless to sprint up to something with this many rows of teeth and do this to it. Nevertheless, while the Doom Marine may be able to tear apart the denizens of Hell with a resting heart rate, you the player are not immune to fear, and that's absolutely something Doom Eternal plays with in the Doom Hunter base level of the game's campaign. It was not easy to find an opponent worthy of the Slayer, but I think you would be impressed. How? Well, by showing you, as you storm your way through the level, horrifying glimpses of the beast you'll eventually be going up against.
as you butcher your way through Doomhunter base, expect to be regularly and cinematically interrupted by such delights as a half-demon being exhumed for the sinister purpose of boss transformation, before watching unnerved as Hell Machines craft very serious looking bits of boss machinery. These grisly tableaus, peppered as they are throughout the level, create a palpable sense of dread, undercutting any potential feelings of badassery that may arise from your wholesale demon slaughter, knowing that before long you're going to have to do battle with a creature that looks like the monster from David Cronenberg's The Fly, but if instead of a Jeff Goldblum and a fly in the teleporter, it was a centaur and a hovercraft. After nearly an hour of this, you'll be more familiar with the particulars of the Doom Hunter's anatomy than you are your own. Seriously, in all these years I've never thought to check what the backs of my knees look like, but I can't stop thinking about how this hand is literally two chainsaws rotating in parallel? Which would not be ideal for sawing logs, but I guess that's probably not what the Doom Hunter is planning on sawing. The battle, when it does come, is all the harder for having been built up quite so much, and the Doom Hunter is hard as nails anyway, requiring you to both smash up its heavily shielded torso and rocket boosters, at which point it will simply fly after you like a bat quite literally out of hell. Master your fear, however, and the Doom Hunter can be killed, at which point the game invites you to jump down this hole where... Oh, right, now you have to fight two of them. Great. We are not done yet. Luckily, there is a foolproof strategy I've devised for this boss encounter. As soon as the fight begins, pause the game, then power down your console and play Animal Crossing instead. Oh, Isabel, you'll never hurt me. Well, I don't hear it. Ah! You've got to be kidding me. You may have heard the phrase, two heads are better than one, but Evil Within 2 antagonist Stefano Valentini took that idea and ran with it all the way into your future nightmares. Ah! Hero of the game, Sebastian Castellanos, is confronted by many horrors, but one of the first, and certainly one of the most memorable, is a mirror scare so effective that to this day I only check my reflection in puddles and a shiny saucepan lid. In your first run-in with the Giggling Guardian, or in our first run-in as shown in this livestream footage, there's nothing you can do but... Oh, wait, what do you have to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, run. Ah, yes, thanks, past me. And in what direction? I've run into a corner. No, get out of the corner. <laughs> oh, towards the light. No, <laughs> through the mirror she smashed through. I'm just, I'm, look, I'm... Oh, no! <laughs> no, 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 no. The creature's appearance is so horrifying that you never want to see it again, much less have to fight it. But this is a survival horror game, so you just know it's coming somewhere down the line. For now, though, all you can do is leg it, shutting doors on her, <laughs> trying not to get buzzsawed in half, and continuing to... what was it again? Past me? Run! Run! <laughs> run! 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 Okay, run. okay. Run, 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 run. Sprint, Maybe sprint, try sprint, talking sprint, to sprint, it. Sprinting. Try turn around I'm and talk sprinting. to it. See if it's it will consuming listen stamina. to reason. You do manage to escape, but when you reach Union City Hall later in the game, you find it's time for the boss fight you've been dreading all along. This time, you actually have to face this monstrous amalgamation of murder victims one on one. He said what we were all thinking. Suddenly, it's up to you to be a competent player and stop her from turning you into human jam, which is pretty difficult to do when you're quietly sobbing before the fight has even started. Can I just run again? <laughs> that always worked before. <laughs> now let us raise the curtain on our main event. <sighs> Say the words Airbuster to someone who's played Final Fantasy VII and watch in horror as they experience a panicky flashback to a difficult boss fight. Mind you, that's better than saying it to someone who hasn't played Final Fantasy VII, they'll probably assume you're trying to sell them scented bathroom spray or something. 
In Final Fantasy VII, released in 1997, the Airbuster is a fearsome enemy, encountered during your second big mission to blow up a reactor run by the sinister Shinra, and like most video game bosses, appears from nowhere, gives you a tough battle, and then lives on in your memories. And In Your Memories is exactly where the Airbuster could have stayed, if not for the Final Fantasy VII Remake for the PS4, which brings this inflatable ne'er-do-well back, now with a graphical overhaul that makes it look like something the Dyson Vacuum Company would build to fight Godzilla. And this time there's an added sinister twist. Now it's made abundantly clear to you as soon as you rock up to the reactor that if you want to get out of this fluoro-lit heck hole alive, you'll have to go through the Airbuster. I give you Sinra's latest triumph of technology, the Airbuster, your executioner. This metal menace is teased by none other than Shinra military boss Heidegger, who revels in gloatingly showing off the corporation's most deadly toy in a live broadcast even if his message is slightly undercut by this clown, let's call him Craig, blundering onto set. Engineering on the line. Craig, the Airbuster is only 60% operational. The estimates were optimistic. I'm on air! Okay, Craig is like a thousand percent fired. You may have gleaned that the Airbuster isn't yet in its most deadly state, but that's cold comfort to Cloud and cohorts as they battle through the reactor, getting grim omens of the enemy being assembled to fight them. You heard the man! Get these components prepped for the Airbuster ASAP! It's ready, sir. Component outbound from B8. The next stretch of the game is spent trying to weaken the Airbuster even a little by diverting its hardware prior to the big fight, which you would think would boost your confidence, but in fact just gives you a whole lot of time to contemplate components like big bomber shells and what they will do to your ragtag party of eco warriors. Probably bomb them, we're guessing, in a big way. We call them BBs. One's enough to blow you to hell and back. When the battle does finally arrive, the Airbuster is every bit as dangerous as you were led to believe, raining down laser beams and rocket-powered fists with a relentless fury. <laughs> this multi-stage boss fight goes on for ages and will push your powers of sustained concentration to the limit, but we're confident the Airbuster brawl wouldn't be nearly so panic-inducing if it hadn't been for all that build-up beforehand. <laughs> Damn it, Airbuster, we let you get in our heads! <sighs> Just so long as Godzilla doesn't make the same mistake. It's this foundation that will continue to build a brighter future for all of us. There are only two things that are certain in this world, death and taxes. And that in Resident Evil 3, the nemesis is always exactly where you want to be. Oh wait, that was three things. This stars hunting bipedal bioweapon first makes his appearance in Jill Valentine's home without an invite. You gotta get out of there. What are you talking about? I don't have time to explain. You gotta get out of there right now. All right, let me grab my... Ah! Oh, come on, at least use the door. Rude. But as much as Jill politely asks Nemesis to leave by shooting bullets into its stupid trash bag looking face, this doesn't make much of a difference and all you can do is run as fast as you can. Oh yeah, a door, that'll hold it. What the hell is that thing? From this point on, the Nemesis becomes a persistent source of threat and stress for you, the player. It's super strong, super tentacly, and seems to have taken against the walls of Raccoon City. Are you me? And you just know that Resident Evil 3 will expect you to fight it one-on-one. -on -one. But how in the hell are you gonna hurt something that spends 75% of its time on fire, being hit with rockets, or having cars driven into it with no lasting effects? The sense of dread generated by your near-constant fleeing is such that when you eventually do have to face Nemesis one-on-one, -on -one, you'll spend the first couple of minutes fleeing it in small circles purely out of habit. Look, Jill, I'm glad you're feeling confident because that makes precisely one of us. If you were hoping for a single standoff, you're plumb out of luck. Old Johnny No Lips keeps coming back for more. And none of these confrontations are any less intimidating. Just because the unkillable bioweapon now looks like a big dog doesn't make it not terrifying. I think it's the lack of skin. If anything, it feels even more hopeless each time, because seriously, will this thing ever die? And oh my god, it's the size of a small bungalow now. Look, just so you know, this is the last f***ing time. I should bloody well hope so, because I am not fighting this thing again. And it, you know what? I'm not even risking it. I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm fine. No, I'm bye. Bye. Bye.
So those were seven boss fights that games decided to make you really, really dread with some interesting shenanigans. Little cutscenes, little glimpses of the boss being assembled. Ugh, horrible stuff. Ugh, ugh, nasty, nasty vibes, nasty vibes for these boss fights. Can you think of any other games that pull the same kind of tricks, make you really dread the upcoming encounter? If so, pop them in the comments. And hey, on screen now you're looking at uh, some footage of Show of the Week Live and Show of the Weekend as well, which are two uh, community shows that we do every week here on Outside Extra and Outside Xbox. They're really fun, and if you enjoyed this list video, then I am supremely confident that you will like those videos as well. So why not check them out? Okay, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. Bye.